you very much. I edit the, the, our annual publication on the year ahead, so I'm in the thick of that at the moment. And what I thought I'd do uh, is give you a bit of a preview of some of the themes that we're looking at uh, that we see coming up for the year ahead. Usually I do after the event, after we've published uh, in mid-November, um, what I call Daniel's Dozen, which is picking out 10 of the big themes that have emerged. So this is Daniel's Dozen before we actually publish. So here's the first one, a sort of overarching theme, if you like, Trumpism versus Um And uh, it's a sort of idea of um, the Trump view of the world, which is somewhat of a closed protectionist uh, certainly America first view of the world, where, uh, um, as opposed to uh, a Macron uh, view which is much more open, or certainly pan-European, uh, very much um, uh, reformist in the French contest. And I think it's just worth saying uh, how enormous the, uh, the win of Macron was compared with, if you look at political surprises of the past year and a half, uh, Brexit, Trump, etc. Actually, Ma you could make a case that Macron was the biggest uh, shock that shouldn't have happened, as it were. A year out, he was um, a political novice, never stood for elective office, didn't have a party, and that party now has a majority in the National Assembly. The other big sporting event that uh, is worth uh, bearing in mind for next year is the Winter Olympics in Seoul. This happened, uh, not in Seoul, it's in, I can't pronounce it, Chongcham or something, Pyeongchang. Uh, and it, it, this is a big deal for the Koreans. I, I, I was there earlier this year. They've been investing huge amounts of, of money, hotels and infrastructure and what have you. And of course, they're hoping that the world will come to South Korea uh, to celebrate these games. And just unfortunate that it's now the center of a possible nuclear conflagration, which isn't the greatest uh, thing that, that um, to attract tourists, but it will make it interesting. And it is still a chance for South Korea to show a different side than has been in the news lately of the Korean Peninsula, sort of joyous, a joyous event. And they have a very, very cute mascot. The Koreans do cute extremely well. Um, on the environmental front, this is the big deal. It happens towards the end of the year the, uh, in, in uh, Katowice in Poland. It's where it's the follow up. Uh, in the series of events that, that gave you the Paris Agreement, and obviously because of America's withdrawal, it becomes particularly uh, poignant. Uh, also poignant because Poland is in such a controversial uh, place these days, and I'm not sure that it can sort of uh, manage this process as well as it has done on previous occasions. It's hosted, I think this is the third or fourth that it's hosted. Um, so that'll be important, and this one is one that was meant to sort of fill in some of the details from the Paris Agreement, and that's going to be particularly tricky. So I think you can expect to see a lot of um, hand-wringing during the course of the year about how the, this whole process is not going as well as it was supposed to originally. And you can expect to see China playing this very well, I think, and trying to present uh, leadership in the absence of American leadership. Uh, quite a lot of things happening in space. Um, I think this one, if it happens next year, uh, out on schedule, SpaceX, uh, flies to tourists ar uh, 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 around the moon and hopefully back again. Um, and, and, you know, it's another example of, of um, extraordinary um, entrepreneur that, that Elon Musk is uh, and sort of disrupting so many businesses. But private space travel and private initiative enterprise in space is making a huge um, difference. And this is another thing to watch in the year ahead. And then anniversaries, these are kind of the comfort zone for anybody trying to do the forecasting business because these are things you know are going to happen. Uh, so um, unified under the theme of workers uh, in the world unite is Karl Marx's 200th uh, anniversary of his birth. And that will be lots of big exhibitions in Trier, particularly where he was born. But also LinkedIn, workers of the world unite in is 15 next year. Extraordinary that it's only 15 years. 10 years since the collapse of Lehman Brothers. A hundred years more, um, more, more uh, somberly, I suppose, uh, since the armistice that ended the First World War. And there's a whole series of uh, anniversaries, centenaries we've been having to do with the First World War, the start, obviously, in uh, 2014 and now the end. Uh, and our own corporate anniversary, The Economist, 175 years. I think even uh, probably a bigger international uh, 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 interest is probably that... Um, uh, Tata, I think, will be 150 years old, the biggest Indian conglomerate. And I think Hertz is 100, the, big, the first rental car service. 
And then finally, um, the thing that you'll be most interested in is that Mary Poppins returns uh, courtesy of Disney next year. Um, so Emily Blunt takes up the role or plays, as it were, Julie Andrews. Um, and uh, I, think, I think she comes back and sort of looks after the kids who have lost their way since she was last here. Um, but uh, it's partly timed, I think, because it's also a centenary of the uh, universal suffrage for women in Britain in 1918. And of course, you, the, the bit of the film that speaks to that is, is uh, their mother and sis sister suffragette and all that. I won't sing it to you. Uh, but I will say that it means that 2018 is bound to be supercalifragilisticexpialidocious. <laughs> <laughs>